Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. Uh, whoa, what am I reading? Uh, just a little story called The Scorpion and the Frog by uh, some old guy. It's one of my favorites. Oh, what's that? Oh, you've never heard of that story before. Well, it's very quick. Let me tell you. Basically, you got a frog. He's sitting by the water. Scorpion walks up to him and goes, hey, buddy, can you do me a favor? Can you help me get across the river here? I need to get across the water. And, you know, I'm a scorpion. I can't swim. And the frog says, well, that's that's crazy. What am I going to? You're a scorpion. I'm not going to carry you across the river. When I'm across the river, you're going to stab me in the back or something. You're a, you're a scorpion. And the scorpion says, hey, listen, buddy, why would I stab you in the back? I'm if I stab you on the back, I'm going to sink too. We're both going to drown if we're in the water. The frog says, you know what? That's a pretty good point you make there, pal. Thank you very much. Very educated. Hop on. I'll take you across. So the frog and the scorpion start swimming across the water. And once you know when they're halfway there, bam, scorpion stabs him in the back. And the frog says, dude, I thought we just talked about this like 30 seconds ago. What the hell? And the scorpion says, sorry, man. It's just in my nature. And uh, here to comment on which tastes better, frogs or scorpion. Uh, Casey Brennan. Oh, it's me. Hello. Well, I noticed that you were eating one right now, so I wanted to see which uh, which you prefer. Yes. So we all have lovely little toothpicks today in in uh, honor of this wonderful movie. Yeah. Um, what is yours made out of? Because neither of us found toothpicks in the office. Mine is two ply corrugated cardboard, only the finest from Zenoscope Shipping Department. Mine is a broken off piece of a plastic fork uh, covered in Sharpie so we could see it on stream. <laughs> hmm. Well, let's see, because uh, I know Ralph definitely has his toothpick. Ralph, what's yours made of? I would normally have a toothpick. I love toothpicks. <laughs> well, where is it? I no one gave me the toothpick memo. I didn't know you guys were planning a toothpick. It's a toothpick party. <laughs> Marilyn's got her um, toothpick. Brian's got his does? toothpick. Oh, my God. I was left out of this memo. All right, check your check I'll your spam. A, I'll use a I'll use a sharpie. Perfect. And uh, <laughs> let's see what Marilyn's using for her toothpick. Marilyn, how are you? Good. And I saw you guys talk to him. I'm like, oh, let me get my toothpick. It's an actual toothpick. Although, <gasps> I wish it were mint flavored. <laughs> Actually, those are lovely. I will say. <laughs> and uh, here to comment on his favorite flavor of toothpicks, it's Brian. What's up? What up? Yeah, uh, I uh, I do the custom honed toothpick made from the bones of my enemies. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Ready to go. Very nice. I'm ready to go. I'm totally Sun ready to go. Um, we have Sun. We yeah? Sun, sun? you ready to go? We got her. Guys, yeah. I have a paper clip. <laughs> What's the thing I can find on the desk here? I, I'll, I'll wait. I, I got. Hold on. We'll wait. I made a uh, uh, buckeye balls for uh, Christmas one year, and I forgot to buy toothpicks at the grocery store, so I just used paper clips. I, I got. Think, uh, you are in good company. I got something even better. I got dental floss. Wow. Mm. This would be a much different movie. Is that if weird? Ryan Is weird. If we did this, it'd be cool. I. <laughs> it's, no, it's, no, it's not. <laughs> It's not cool. It's a little tougher when you're driving. You know what, Marilyn? People like you make flossing that people want not want to floss. <laughs> Flossing's cool. Oh no, jump. I didn't say that flossing wasn't no, cool, just... but as a toothpick, <laughs> uh no. <laughs> um toothpick you put hi, it everyone. Well, I guess the flossing won't work. Let me try. <laughs> How did everybody feel? How's everybody feeling? Fine. Um is anybody is this anybody's first time watching Drive? Ooh. Ooh. I did not expect that, Brian. I'm not <laughs> sure, to be honest. I you're not I'm sure? sure. It could be my first, it could be my second. Really? Uh-huh. Interesting. I don't know how you forget this movie. It's it's, it's I watched oh, it. I again. Do. <laughs> wow, Marilyn. No, it's not a fan. <laughs> All right, we're we're gonna get into it. Let's get into it. Um, it's, it's probably my fourth or fifth time, I think. Oh wow! Uh, how about you, Noah? Uh, I can, I I don't remember how many times I've seen this movie. Um, I let Casey log into my Amazon account because I had it purchased um, from a few years back. 
Uh, I don't know. This was one of those movies that I would just fall asleep to. Not because it was falling asleep right. already, but yeah. it was it was it nice was and cozy. Do what? How about you, son? Like how many times I've seen it? Yeah. Uh, I think I've seen it twice now. And the first time I fell asleep as well. And it was so boring. And I, I remember not liking it. Yeah. But I went in with a really good attitude this time. And I didn't really like it as well. <laughs> Well, wow. I will say because that's I'm so that's a curious thing. to hear what's going on. This is a very divisive film. This so, is. <laughs> there was a story wow. when this movie first came out. There was a woman who went to go see it, and she then sued the production company because she yeah. said that the trailer was false advertising. <laughs> well, well, she thought it was an action. Like she a, was thought it was going to be like Jason Statham, which like it was Grand originally Porter. supposed to be with Hugh Hugh uh, Jackman. Oh really? Yeah. He was, he was originally attached. Yep. And then uh, fell apart, came back around, and we get this version, which is based on a novel, by the way. In case hmm. you think I'm yeah. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about the opening scene because it's one of my favorite opening scenes in the movie. What? <laughs> what? Where are we? Where are we at with this? How are we feeling going in? Brian, I, I'm, I'm particularly, I'm particularly I interested in Brian and Casey's viewpoint because it's their first watch, too. Yeah. So I sure. Uh, I think um, the opening scene was uh, really well done. You know, in the spirit of your opening scenes of, you know, 007, anything that what what's the what's the gist of what's going on? And literally, that opening scene encapsulates the whole film. So. You figure it out as like, oh, I get it. He's a wheelman of a you know of a heist crew, and this is what he gets what he gets to do, and uh, it's something like that. that I'm like, yo, that is hot. I liked it. I thought it was kind of cool, um, and it's funny because there's been so many other type of movies like this uh, that do it well and not do it so well. I thought this one did it well. Now, you know, Gosling. Is being his Ryan Gosling self. Uh, if you've seen uh, what was it, Blade Runner twenty forty nine? It's the same, same, yeah. the same kind of story, the same kind of taking his time. He's very, very concise with his words. I like the fact that the filmmaker allowed scenes to breathe, that they didn't just cut and cut and cut. That his um, awkwardness in certain areas and. Or stoicness actually played well. <laughs> I have to laugh a little bit at that because the opening scene is like the best thing of the whole movie. And when you said let it breathe, yes. But he let the rest of the film breathe way too fucking much. Wow. <laughs> wow. Man, usually in, I feel like me and Marilyn are usually in lockdown. And <laughs> Casey, what did you think of the opening scene? Oh, I loved the opening scene. But at the same time, I also felt like the opening scene could have been extended a little bit more and then made into a short film. And it would be like one of the coolest. You wanted to see like a 10 minute call guy drive around getting away. With the yeah, like I I mean, it's I don't know. I I genuinely don't know what I'm rating this movie. Um, at the end, like, no, yeah, <laughs> let, let us let me, sweat you. Please, please, let me sweat uh, you as we go along. Uh, um, but yeah, no, I really liked the opening scene, I thought it was cool. Me and Noah were talking about it. I think it's the like confidence that uh Ryan Gosling has that he's going to get away with this, or like the guys in the in the back of the, the car, like, you know, like all freaked out, kind of in all of what he's doing. Um, but I don't know. I think there there is like this like cool factor that they established really early on in the film, which is pretty good. Okay. Uh, no, well, uh, no, yeah, I gotta hear this. I gotta hear this. Son, you can go first if you'd like. Um, no, I agree. I think the, the first 10 minutes are probably the best part of the film. And also probably the last 15 minutes or so were really good as well. But everything in between was just way too drawn out. And I like to, to, I was like, I wonder if we cut out all the scenes that were just drawn out, how long the movie would actually really be. Probably about like 30 minutes, maybe. Someone's <laughs> got to have a cut of that somewhere. Yeah, I'd like to see that one. That would be very interesting. 
I, 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 same as everyone else, I love the intro. Like Brian said, it pretty much takes everything that you need to know about the film and it sets it up so that when, you know, everything else happens later on in the film and you kind of start seeing Ryan Gosling like lose it, um, I think it makes it a little bit better. But just the, the synchronization and the coordination and all of the stuff that he does at the very beginning. Uh, I just think it's great. And I don't have any decals or anything on my car because I ever, if I ever get followed by a police helicopter, I know that I can lose them because there's, it's just a popular car. No one will be looking at you. Uh, Brian, what were you going to say? Uh, you know, there, there's another movie that's incredibly similar to this uh, that came out in 2017 with Frank Grillo as the main character called Wheel Man. Uh, which was uh, on, it's on Netflix if you want to see it. It is, it's really good. Uh, it's a lot faster pace. Um, there's a young daughter involved who's part of it. That's really cool. Um, and a majority of the film takes place in the car. It's, it's really cool. So if you, if, you, if you think like this was slow, but you liked the premise, I would also recommend Wheel Man on Netflix with Frank Grillo. I am putting that in mind. I mean, it was a sweet story. It just was way too drawn out. Um, and and I agree with you, son. It's like the ending was good as well. But it's like there was that long drawn out moment at the end even where it's like, mm -hmm. I, I, I understand letting a scene breathe and giving it meaning. But there's also a point where it's like, all right, overkill. Mm -hmm. um, but the story, I think, is I, the story. It was just a very quiet and subtle story, um, and the actors were really great in it. It was just like it was. It yeah. It it, it was all a finessing of editing that could really have put this over the top. Um, I will say I love the '80s noir aesthetic. Yeah. As well as the sound, I thought the soundtrack was an A plus, but the music, yeah, I think, yeah, the soundtrack was, was awesome, insanely, just very well done. Like that wrote me in right away. Which was really cool. The eighties noir vibe to it. Um, yeah, and I the, the music really lends itself to like everything that's happening, and I, that's one of the reasons why. You know, it, it just everything works together. It's like one complete the music, uh, you know, complements the action. The action complements the music. And you just have nice shots of Ryan Gosling driving around uh, at night. It's good to plus, drive uh, right? plus, also the acting, the supporting cast. I mean, you had Brian Cranston, you had Albert Brooks, you had a, a really, you know, Ron Perlman, really good, mm -hmm. solid support um, yeah. with it. I think. Uh, Oscar, uh, Oscar Isaac. Oscar the, Isaac, who plays Christina Hendricks. Before his, before his like blowing up, Oscar Isaac. Right, exactly. Uh, Casey Mulligan, who plays the uh, girlfriend Irene, or the interest Irene, she was really for some, good. For some reason, I thought that was Michelle Williams until I watched it. Again. I was like, <laughs> oh, it has Michelle Williams in it. And I was like, That's not they have the same kind of eye structure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, supporting cast was incredible. I think I, I read that uh, Cranston had a lot of offers. He was in the middle of Breaking Bad, or maybe toward the tail end of Breaking Bad. I guess. And um, he did this because the, the director um, let him work on his like basically come up with a lot of the character choices and let him come up with the character death scene, which I thought was interesting, which is rare. <laughs> Directors like, yeah, come up with your own death scene. We'll do it now. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Well, hopefully people... <laughs> um, Who not had... everybody. Not oh. everybody. Who had the best death in the movie? Because there were some pretty good ones. Um, I would say the best death. Uh, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring right in the bat, say the guy that gets killed in Nino's at the very mm -hmm. end. Oh, and that I was... That was a that was a that was a tough one to watch, but that was great. You think uh, Christina Hendricks in the bathroom was uh, not too bad? Yeah, that I, I kind of that that was. I mean, it 
it's almost because they did it in slow motion. It's like you could almost see it. And I'm like, well, that's a really cool effect Mm -hmm. was my thought. (laughs) It was well. I mean, I like the way they do the violence in the movie because it's like so unexpected. Like it'll be very quiet and chill. And then it just ramps up from zero to 100 Mm -hmm. in like 1.2 seconds. And then it's back to like not like the elevator scene, which is, I thought, one of the best. Well, my well, favorite, actually, my favorite scene. scene. Yeah, yep. great scene. Hmm. Um, spoiler alert in terms of uh, when we talk about favorite scenes, but the violence from going to that kiss and then he stomps the guy. Yeah, I just thought it was so well directed. So that that was another brutal kind of scene because, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it, hmm. it was kind of like um, a Walking Dead moment with him pounding him down his head. Yeah, it reminded yeah, me a lot. Know, of- out of all of them, I think Ron Perlman got off the easiest. Yeah. Well, that was the one gripe. He did. It was too. It was boring. Like, why don't we see anything? I hate it. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, head stopping. He was the biggest asshole, and the mask was awesome. The stunt mask. Who doesn't love yeah. the stunt mask? I can't believe you guys are into the stunt mask. This made me laugh audibly because it looks like one of my best friends. Well, you know what it is? He went, he went, he went from Ryan Gosling to Ryan Reynolds there. <laughs> it looks, it looks like Ryan. Ronald. Every time I he saw it, I was like, it's Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds. Looks like I couldn't decide now. whether it was like, is this supposed to be kind of like Vin Diesel or like a mix of, you know what I mean? Like, it's like if it's Joe Rogan. I'm going to say Joe Rush. It, it Joe almost Rush. looks a little like Brian Cranston as well. Play it again. Play it. God, it's it's the blue dress, gold dress thing. <laughs> I love this like l- slight smile he has in on the mask. And um, so scary. <laughs> I love the opera that like introduces it as he's walking towards, and it's just that slow build up, and the like the lyrics in the the song. It's like uh, it, it's talking about like the light. Uh, and like for those who are like, it doesn't belong for those who are still in the shadows and stuff like that is pretty good stuff. <laughs> um, I did notice that you're right. Like the first, I think there's like 18 minutes that goes by that there's such limited dialogue in this movie, which didn't really bother me, but I could see how some people would be bothered by it. Um, there was like no dialogue until he like gets to the girl's house and starts talking to her. Like, yeah. But, I- but- I mean, one one thing that I found very sweet, though, it was the relationship between Ryan Gosling's uh, character and the little boy. Mm-hmm. I, I felt like he was probably relating to him in some aspect mm-hmm. and why he had such a connection with him. And one of the scenes that I love that I think works well for his character is when uh, the father is all beaten up and bloody in the parking garage. Ryan Gosling steps right over him and goes straight to the kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. think that is just classy move. Mm-hmm. So I guess I have a question for everybody. Like, I know that my complaint about John Wick was that there wasn't enough, like, character development in the beginning. Like, there's very little character development for Ryan Gosling. Like, we literally know nothing about him. Does that, so like, I think I, I think is that, that another issue? Need- no, yeah, no. Maybe. Oh my gosh. I I realized There's that because no... I was using Noah's account and Amazon has like the thing where like it'll pop up the actors and it literally just said driver. And I was like, he doesn't yeah. have a name in this movie. I mean, they, do, they clearly do that as part of the, uh, for a reason. Like it's almost like, com- not, I thought that was what was com- kind of cool about it. Like what's this guy's whole story? Like, mm-hmm. we, don't know. we can make it up in our own. I think it work. It doesn't always work. Mm-hmm. I think if it's done right, I think it's a good choice for. Uh, Listen, he uh, told you in the beginning of the movie, five minutes beforehand, five minutes after, do whatever you want. You have me for five minutes and five minutes only. That was it. That's all you need to know. I don't carry <laughs> guns. I don't do any shooting. I just drive. Brian, you know, I, Brian's ready for the sequel, man. I think the recast. The, the way that it was being set up in the very beginning at a certain point is like, uh, you know, you, you kept guessing as to, oh, okay, what is he? And at a certain point you think, oh, he's a cop. And then, oh, oh no, he's not a cop. It's like, oh, he's, it's so it kind of had you guessing up until the moment he gets to his apartment and, and then 
well, no, it's like then it kind of showed that he was a stunt driver. I mean, at, at right. This- we know he's a stunt driver. We know mm-hmm. Cranston. He came to Cranston's body shop to start, or his yeah mechanics shop to work. That's why he only has five minutes. Is because he has three jobs. He has a lot of jobs. Yeah. <laughs> he only has five minutes in the day. I think they. Uh, I think they. Since this was 2011, I think they would have, if it was redone today, he, he would have been a Uber Eats driver. <laughs> <laughs> Uber Eats. I, I you got me for five minutes to pick up your food and five. No, minutes. no. Yeah, I got to deliver this food in five minutes. Otherwise, it's cold or it's old. Mm-hmm. You're a great Domino's driver. That is a fact. That's a fact, guys. Um, the scorpion jacket. I really want to mention this because I want it. You should get it. You can, ne- you can never wear it in public because everybody be like, "Who's this d bag wearing a scorpion?" <laughs> but I do. I did. Look, I did look it up on Amazon. They are available for seventy four ninety nine. I also um, looked up, and those masks are available, but they're like four hundred dollars. Good Halloween. Thanks. That would be a good Halloween outfit and see how many people figure it out. Yeah, five people would, uh, like maybe five people would get it. Um, I had two we all friends, get it. Yeah, I had two friends in high school <laughs> that watched this movie and then went out and bought the jackets. So like two guys in my friend groups would be wearing this jacket at the same time. Oh. The- <laughs> exactly. Well, they did that intentionally. But uh, no, they, they, they went out and bought driving gloves and everything. Did it work? Did they pick up chicks? No. Well, they didn't get any chicks. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't think they it, should have bought a mask. That would have worked better. <laughs> they didn't have the toothpick. They didn't have the, the thing to pull it all together. Um, or, or the I, skill to pull off a bank job. That's true. I did like. I did think it was an interesting. Brian mentioned the Albert Brooks. It, you know, I felt like it was one of those offers that they went out to Albert Brooks and he was like, I, I I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you guys have seen Albert Brooks play like a bad guy like that before. I hadn't. So like, I thought it was a weird choice because I always see Albert Brooks in these funny roles. Um, and then he's like the bad guy. And it's like, it, I don't, at first I was like, is this believe? Is this going to be believable? But it was. I mean, he played a pretty good bad guy. Yeah, I mean, he was a bad guy with a kind of sarcastic sense of humor that worked for him. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think he played incredibly well off of Ron Perlman uh, and Brian Cranston. Um, I think they were they were all on par. They were all on the same level of high high level of acting. So uh, there was never any moment where I was like, "Oh boy, that was awful." Like even the lower level thugs who were in the film, I think pulled it off incredibly well as well. I got to say, uh, what's his name? Ryan Gosling. I, you know, I felt like he, he was believable too. Like he's not a big guy. He's not like an action. You don't think like action stuff, but you yeah. know, he made it. There was one line I wrote down when he said, uh, how about, <laughs> how about this? You shut your mouth or I'll kick your teeth down your throat and shut it <laughs> A little bit much, but there it is. And uh, I believe them, even though he's, he looks like he's maybe a buck 65 soaking wet. <laughs> and even uh, even when he smacked around Blanche when the, the heist went bad at back of the hotel, uh, yeah. and he's like, you're going to tell me the truth, you kind of believed him. Yeah. I, I mean, Once he put the gloves on, I know she was in new shoes and trunk. <laughs> I, 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 as far as like what you were saying, uh, Ralph, you know, not seeing him as a, as an action hero and stuff like that. I kind of felt the same way until last year I saw the gray man. I like that. You don't like it. Um, and, uh, he was definitely, he definitely an action hero in, in that. Yeah. I thought that was, I yeah. Underrated movie. yeah, he, uh, he had, um, him and Russell Crowe did that comedy oh, love that movie right where he nice there was guy. a lot of action involved yeah nice guys where they were both doing action then he's definitely he definitely pulls off action very and he, well and he in that movie he was a more like a dorky the dorky right guy that's mm-hmm. a great movie. that's shane black like that actually. yep um X, uh, yeah, another underrated movie um, hmm. again like in, in in this though it's like he's everything that was done 
It was just very subtle. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about pushing it, pushing it into anybody's face, which I guess is a good thing. But I think, well, that subtleness. That one, that one scene, though, his boot was being pushed into someone's face. It was literally <laughs> being pushed into somebody's face, <laughs> um, pretty hard. <laughs> Hey, like, she, like, what's going through her head when she stepped out of the elevator and she's like, oh, like, did he kiss right. her? I don't know what's going, through, the door I don't know what's going through her head, but I knew what went through his head. <laughs> ah, all the puns. What a bam. Yeah, because Good night, like, everybody. Did, did he kiss her because he was like, I better get this in now because I'm about to. No, I, I, I think that actually head. that that was just a moment to distract the guy. Hmm. Thinking that it's like, all right, I'm not on to him, but it's like, I'm on to you. It's like, but also then reassuring her, you know, that, that, um, I got your back, even though she has no freaking clue she what's going know. on. She did not know. That was a great scene. I love that scene. I don't know. The elevator scene was fun. It's like, great. I don't know. Well, and one of the first times that we see her in the film, too, is when she's coming out of the elevator. So Ryan Gosling, like the right. shot of her when Ryan Gosling gets into the elevator has that it. same, you know, structure. So the doors are closing on her. One, she's walking away. The other, she's just staring at him. Yeah, I thought that was actually a pretty well shot imagery scene um, because lots of times, you know, and the one thing it actually came through to my mind is that when you've got somebody going in an elevator and then you kind of do the the reverse it's like usually they'll forget to put the, the whoever may have been coming out of the elevator back you know because they're just background it's like and they probably let those people go already so there's like nobody there and it's usually one or two people anyway and i'm thinking to myself it's like oh it's like they had her Still in the background, walking away. Oh, that's good, but that's because she was an integral part of the scene. <laughs> right, right. Um, does anybody have a scene? I have one scene that comes to mind. Does anybody have a scene that made them laugh or like find, found out of comical or in this? I do. So the of the strip club scene. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. You took my scene. The I'm sorry. Well, I, I have something for the both of us that I think you'll appreciate. So currently I have a file on my computer called uninterested strippers.jpg. I like it's the best. They're so jaded. They've seen it all. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, is this like so commonplace like i have so yes. many questions and like, also like screw this guy he's an asshole you know <laughs> like he, he probably is just jerk to them as he is to everybody else i could not stop laughing at this scene yeah <laughs> this was the bad they're just staring at him <laughs> i mean i, I think the... i hit it on the head like <laughs> another pun intended hit the nail on the head nice Ooh. Ah, and like we're so, we got such puns yeah, that was a good one. I hope everyone's keeping track. That's three puns in the last minute and a half. Two by Brian, one by me. You guys need to catch up to the puns. Yeah, I think I think it was done for the reasoning of like these girls have seen it all, and this guy's a this guy's a piece of shit. They could care less. I mean, a couple of them are like, hmm, watch this guy get. Beat, 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 beat. It's probably I feel like there wasn't even. Yeah. yeah, I feel like there wasn't even like a. Like they like look at their face. One, look at the girl well, on the the one, one dancer ran out of the room immediately, which was yes. So they, one dancer ran, and she's okay. Like, well, she must be new there. So like, like, <laughs> clearly, the direction was you know clearly the director is like the rest of you have like this is commonplace, and you really don't like this kind of thing. <laughs> really against watching. And I really appreciated how when he brings the hammer down on the guy's hand, like it, he's walking in, like it doesn't cut for a close up or anything. Like it keeps that shot. So it's kind of just like, you, you don't really, he just, boom, he goes and he does it. You know, it doesn't even think, doesn't blink. It's, you're not ready for it. Um, but it's just some small little thing I appreciated. <laughs> There's yeah. a bunch of little small stuff I love in this movie. Well, Casey stole my favorite scene, my favorite comedic scene. Anybody I like uh, I like when he walked in. He's like, "What are you doing here, uh, eating Chinese food in my, uh, you know, in my pizzeria?" And he's like, "What is a Jew making pizza for?" Uh, blah blah mm -hmm. blah. Like, right. it was your traditional, typical kind of New Yorkers making fun of them, right. you know, in ethnic jokes towards each other. 
<laughs> I think my uh, the the scene that I think probably makes me laugh is when he offers the kid a toothpick. Um, like, <laughs> but in my mind, he's just like he's so socially awkward, and like his whole thing is toothpicks. Right. He's just like, what am I going to do with this kid? Uh, hey, here you go. Here's a toothpick. <laughs> you know, like he, it's 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 a genuine attempt to to like reach this kid and be a nice guy, but he's just so I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Um, we talked were... about like. Oh. No, that's okay. I mean, it, there were there were scenes for me. I I unfortunately did not write everything down. And to be honest, it's like I I, I couldn't remember a lot of things until you're starting to talk about it. And I'm like, oh yeah, this and that, because you're starting really... to come around. You're starting to come around. <laughs> no, it just I just so really like... enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a love. It's a love story wrapped around with the with the yeah. in the guise of a crime thriller, right? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Can we talk about the scorpion and the frog? Because I feel like that plays a very important role in the story. Well, before you go into that, Noah, there was the whole point. I, I did read the, the director. What's his name? Refin is that his last name? Um, he did want this, but he bases off from fairy tale. So the idea was this was a fairy tale at night because uh, he was reading from fairy tales. It was kid at night, not our comic book from fairy tales. The real, the original Brothers Grimm fairy tale. Um, you would read them at night, and then he thought like this is like Brian Gosling is the prince or whatever. She's the princess, and she's in, in trouble, and he has to help. Safe. That was the original thought process. So it is a fairy tale. And it's, so that's why they did it. I guess he told the Prince of the Frog. So he so, says. So he says. <laughs> so he, says. Uh, he also said he did foresee this as being like, he wanted it to be like Gosling's character, sort of like Kane. I don't know if he said Kane, but like, uh, what's that? Kung Fu? Is that the show? Where he'd go from. Yeah. Kong. You go from town to town and like fix things and help people in need. That's how he foresaw Gosling's character. So he's just like, in the future, he would go to the next town and do this with somebody else. So. <clears throat> yeah. And you know, I do think it had a, a very kind of like noir, like you had mentioned earlier, Ralph, like that noir aspect. And I feel like it played into a lot of those like classic noir tropes where, you know, the, he just a guy in like the wrong place at the wrong time, bad luck, you know, fates put his, you know, finger. But then another part of it, I guess you could say is the nature aspect of it where it's, you know, he kind of can't help himself or the others can't help themselves. Is he the scorpion or is he the frog with the scorpion on his back? Is he both? Does he mm. go from one to the other? Is mm. Al Brooks a scorpion? And at the end, when they both stab each other, they're both scorpions. And who's the frog? You got a scorpion over here. You got a frog over here. You got me in the middle saying, what do you want what, from me? What do you want from me? What do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, what are you guys fucking saying? <laughs> um, any, I, any other lines of dialogue you guys had to stick out? I have, I have two I wrote down. Um, one was about the shut your mouth and I'll kick your teeth down your throat and shut it for you. Uh, not the most original line, but I enjoyed it. Um, the one that made me kind of like, I didn't know whether to cringe or not. So, uh, what's his name? Bad guy. Bad guy holds his hand out to shake Ryan Gosling's hand when he first meets him. And he's like holding it out for this weird amount of time. Like, and Gosling's like slowly taking off his gloves. And he just got done driving. And he's like, uh, he goes... My hands are a little dirty. And then, uh, what's his name? Goes, so are mine. And he shakes his hand. I thought that was kind of like, mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's kind of corny, but I get it. But why did he take so long to shake his hand? It was weird. Yes, please. My favorite has to be, I drive. Like, <laughs> this is so good. He said, wait, what was that? He goes, what, when uh, she asks what he does, and he just goes, I drive. What, like a like, limo driver or something? Like a limo driver? And she's, he's like, wow. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that dangerous? 
it's so only part time. time. I, I never saw him do this. <laughs> it was implied. My head. Oh, hey. my head. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. You funny. need to be driven around my in hair. here. <laughs> my, green, my green screen is really. Hmm? <laughs> Ralph, I think you need to fund the female version remake of this film That's with Casey, Casey as the driver. Be, you want to be the driver in Drive, too. To the drive ass. What am I going to do with all this money? We'll call it Drive 2, Casey on the Streets. <laughs> I do you four know. minutes. I don't do five minutes. I do four minutes. <laughs> no, let me say a very sexist joke and say because she's a female, you have an hour... <laughs> with me <laughs> Ding. that's it Ding. good night everybody <laughs> I thought you were going to make like a I can't drive joke <laughs> yeah. we're going yeah. sex this round right. <laughs> chat <laughs> that's her not me <laughs> your car has been in the parking lot for the better part of the month stop I moved it <laughs> My car broke down at the Zenisco parking lot and I left it for like a month until the until someone had to say something and be like, easy, like I know. Don't worry, it's it's gone. I got it. I it's 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 gone. It's fine. Like, the good news is I'm here. The bad news is my car won't start. <laughs> go, go, go! I drive a 2006 Corolla now. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but underneath the hood, you got 300 horsepower. <laughs> you got three horsepower. <laughs> Most common state, uh, most common car in Horsham, Pennsylvania. Uh, what about so? Beyond that, how do we feel about the uh, about the the end of the movie, the the final scene? Does anybody have any thoughts? On, <laughs> I mean, I know Marilyn is not a fan of this movie. <laughs> she doesn't have a lot to say. She's trying not to bite her tongue. Um, <laughs> uh, any thoughts on the end? How it ended? We want to spoil it for people. I think they, they're fine with that because it, that's why they're coming in. No, I, I liked it. I thought, you know, could there have been a sequel? Sure, why not? Um, but as a one shot, it's a good way to go out. Yeah. Yeah. I was surprised I, he lived pretty. I mean, he got stabbed pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping he would drive himself to the hospital. Was it supposed to be like his last drive? Was he dying? I don't think he was driving, dying because. What a word to tell, actually. You uh, know. After reading the director's comments, it sounded like like this was sort of like him opening up the world potential. They just never did a sequel. It's it. I feel like it's one of those endings. It's like make up your own conclusion. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Did he live? Did he die? It was an well, artsy movie. Like I was that. mad he left the money right next to the dead body. Like at least take the money. No, because now the girl's safe. He knows if he, if he leaves the, the money, that's Albert Brooks' whole thing, was he's like, she's off the table. Gone. The boy, too. Albert Brooks doesn't have anything to say about it now. Yeah. Hey, all he said was... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Speaking of Albert Brooks, I'd like to take a moment to uh, advertise the brand new Xenoscope blog run by our dear friend Sarah, who made an appearance on last week's Movie Club. She rated the top hunks of Movie Club 2022 uh, and gave Drive a little uh, shout out this week. And she rated Albert Brooks number one out of Drive. <laughs> Over Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling didn't even make the list. <laughs> is, Sarah, is Sarah suffering from some <laughs> form of I? I, um, I don't know what that. I don't even know how to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Someone. Uh, so I, I, if I remember correctly, she wears glasses. So I think it's time for Lens Crafters. Yeah, Lens Crafters. <laughs> pay her a visit. Uh, <laughs> What was that movie he was in with Meryl Streep where they go to heaven or they go to the purgatory? That was a pretty <coughs> She's thinking of a young Albert Brooks. That's what oh, she said. Right. She said Albert Brooks got her at, quote, an impressionable age and that <laughs> Ryan Gosling, quote, does not do anything for her. If you yeah. have comments, uh, arguments, you are, are willing to, to hit that link and comment below. <laughs> Ryan Gosling is my I boy. Should. That's probably not a good... That wasn't a, your best uh, promotion of a blog. <laughs> but 
No. I'm getting engagement. Each their own. It is oh, a great oh, blog. I, oh, I get very excited every right. Tuesday. Um, yes. So I, I, I got to say, I mean, what time is it? Let's see where we are. Five forty. We have a little time. Um, any other thoughts on this movie before we move into the next segment, which is Zebiscope? Um, any other thoughts on this film? Yes, son. Okay, so um, this is the part that bugged me the most about the whole movie. And I, yes. okay, have you guys, okay, I have a question. How do you guys, did you guys feel the chemistry between Ryan Gosling's character and Irene? Did you feel the love? I thought so. I thought so. I thought like, yes. the, the scene, the one scene that made me think it, actually, you might be right, because the one scene I thought it most was when my husband comes home. And he's talking to her, and she's just like staring at him, like, I don't fucking want to be with this guy. And like, it's cutting back and forth between him and her. And she's just like, huh? But she, maybe you're right. Like, I don't know about the chemistry on the screen as much, except for the elevator. Well, even the story that uh, what's his face provides about how they, you know, met up, you know, it, it was kind of yeah. like a, a circumstance of, I, I don't know. Like, I don't think that they, were planning to it, it wasn't like they had some big plans of starting a family and you know finding a house or something it just kind of happened and obviously he went to prison so you know when he comes back and he's making that toast and he's like praising her and everything talking about you know how she stood by him you know it cuts to her and you can just tell she's like torn so i mean there's a part of her i imagine that still you know loves this guy you know sure. raised a kid with him um but then there's also Ryan Gosling, who's obviously, you know, there for her, who's providing for her. And I love that shot when he first walks out of the grocery store and you don't see what he's looking at on the right hand side of the screen. Like you have an idea, but he comes uh, out, he takes his time, he puts the bag on top of the hood, he looks over, looks back, and then it pans over and it follows him with the camera. And then you see her car smoking and obviously, you know, it goes from there. But good stuff. Yeah. What some? What was your so? What was your thought? Was it that they? Were, I didn't feel it at all. I didn't feel like they had chemistry. Um, yeah, I don't know where. I don't know where it starts. <laughs> so I don't know. In the, in the, even in the elevator, it was super awkward. So I don't know. I took it to like she f sees this like she got this f f up of a husband who's in jail and not there for this kid. Like, her kids are world right. And then here comes this guy who's like coming in. He's being the father figure to this kid right away. Has this bond with it, and it's almost like she's falling in love with that because he is there for her and her, for her kid and provides something a husband can't provide, which is uh, yeah, being there <laughs> essentially. I, I I kind of have to agree with that. It's like you know whether they had the chemistry or didn't i think the chemistry was more about the the sense of family versus more than romance mm. yeah kind of kind of maybe was was seen more in, in the storyline uh, no, 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 yeah. the kiss i mean the kiss is the only romantic part of the film mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the elevator, right before the skull crush <laughs> a lovely skull crush um, yeah I don't know it's a good question though she didn't have she was very quiet it was like the one thing I did like was Cranston said his um, his character he wanted to make him a motor mouth because um, it was like the polar opposite of Ryan Johnson's game so like that was the one that was another thing that he got a say in developing the characters, just like let, making him talk constantly. Um, well, you kind of need a contrast in there somewhere because it all can't be just subtleness and quietness and low key. I also, yeah, mm -hmm. no, you're right. And I did think the scene, his death scene was really, was, I thought it was yeah. just unique. Like he was like, he slices his, his artery open. He's just like, there, it's done. He's like, 
it's over. No pain. Like it was just cool how I don't know. I just thought that was a cool scene. Yeah. Well, you were talking earlier about, you know, not seeing Albert Brooks as like that villain guy. And I think that that kind of helped his character in this because he was a very like personable, you know, villain. You know, he he even said to Brian Cranston, you know, he, it's just bad luck. You know, 2000 heists, you know, in California or whatever in a year. And you just had to pick the wrong one, you know. And so obviously he, he he's even going with, you know, back and forth with Nino. And Nino's like, listen, this guy's going to tie you and me to the heist. He's He's got to go. And Nino just kind of has like, has like yeah, he, does, he doesn't want to, but yeah, he's he's got to go. And so when he goes and he kills Brian Cranston, it's like one of the most gentle, <laughs> you know, like, dude, I'm sorry. Yeah, he, didn't, he didn't torture him. He didn't do anything. He asked him for information. Cranston didn't give it to him. He was like, all right, well, I'll just kill you. Hmm. Um. And the other thing I love about Brian Cranston's character is like, if you watch the Sopranos, you always have those guys that are like, come on, man, I just need a little bit of money. You know, like I'll, I'm good for it. And like throughout the show, they're always showing back up with like, you know, casts and, you know, eye patches because they've been thrown off of a bridge or something. And I just feel like if you ever were to follow those people and, you know, see their story, that's what Brian Cranston's character would be. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. All right. Hot moment of moment of truth. Are we doing chart first? What are we doing, Casey? We can do chart first. I, I was really impressed with my chart this time around. I, mm -hmm. I made it in Canva. We have Zenoscope color. Oh, whoa. whoa. <laughs> uh, that's too fancy. Oh, what the hell's going we on? Got, we got rounding here. No, no, no. I'm going to need you to no, no, round no, the no, shape. color is, is, <laughs> called, is called transparent. What? His, his color is transparent. Mm. See? It was hard right. to notice. It, it matches the background too much. Wait, who's? Noah. No. No. Okay, Noah okay, and Crystal, Crystal are the same color. Crystal and Crystal Noah. And Okay, the background is clearly an off-white with red tones, where Noah and Crystal are are just gray. I don't know what's going on. They all look like the same colors. No, but no, I they, think you you need to look at your screen uh, and uh, maybe correct the coloring there. Yeah, the screen's broken. Super Mario Three. Am I, am I losing my mind? I see two blacks, two reds. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, those are the same colors. Like Sun and Sarah are the same color because. Uh, it's red and black. I didn't. I wanted to stay with the Zenoscope theme. I don't want to go too crazy. I don't want rainbow. So <laughs> this okay. is this is the chart. Okay. <laughs> I take Come no on, criticisms guys. of my charts. I'm very confused by that chart, but I. I, I may Listen, if they, if they, if they, if someone was to ask Casey, what do you do? She would be like, Okay, so I, chart. I chart. I chart. <laughs> I chart. Flash I chart. <laughs> Casey, I graph. I graph. I gotta look at I my board. <laughs> so when two people are the same color, how do we know who ranked who? That's why I'm confused. Well, they're in order. You can see. So, okay. so yeah, Brian's in red. Brian's Maryland. Yep. See, they're almost like right under each other. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I, I, I noticed that. I was. Like, I, I, I didn't can... realize that. <laughs> it, it took me a minute to notice that it was like in the same. <laughs> I will improve my chart upon my. You. I, I just want to say my my score is. I'm feeling pretty good about this year. Hmm. Uh, okay. Well, I got I got crapped on for two years of bad scores. <laughs> anyway. So you decided to stack the deck Thank by picking so. nothing but good movies. To be fair. <laughs> It'd be fair. Is we this a, a good movie though? We had a theme. I didn't pick all the movies. I picked a lot. Of them. But I, I didn't pick all. Of them. I couldn't watch another creep show. Um, okay. <laughs> let's uh let's get let's get to it. Who wants to start? Go ahead, Marilyn. So I guess you know it's not gonna be a very high score. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm going to give it a two. Wow. Um, 
And I don't give it worse than that only because I felt like the acting was very good. It's just the story did not need to be an hour and 40 minutes of my freaking life. Um, (laughs) And I tend to wonder, it's like, even if they knocked off 15 minutes, would that still have been enough? Uh, Wow. Okay. Wow. Two. I did not enjoy dry. Uh, no. Casey, why don't you go? Okay. So the only thing I knew about this movie going into it was Noah's description yeah. of quote, it's sad Ryan Gosling driving. And that's pretty much it. And it's great. <laughs> um and that's kind of what it was. It was just like every time I was like, oh, he's sad. Like, I don't know. It, it really was just sad yes. Ryan Gosling. And a, like a lot of people, again, before watching the movie that I talked to in the office about it, it was like, this is more of an aesthetic movie. This is more of a visual movie. Um, the plot's kind of bare, I guess, but or simple maybe. Um, but it's more like, again, aesthetics. Now, like, I kind of had the conversation about, we were saying, like, it's kind of, like, vaporwave themed, which is, like, the background. But I feel like if it's going to be, like, an aesthetic movie, it didn't go far enough for me. Like, I would have liked to see, it had some really good shots, but I would have liked to see it, see better shots or more, more shots that were, like, I was like, wow, that's so impressive or something so with that said even though it was a slow burn i will give it a 3.75 that's a good score it's a good score it's a solid score i i truly assumed i even said to casey like you might hate it (laughs) because i figured if she thought aliens was slow you know i'm I'm very surprised (laughs) by the by the 3.7 uh, Noah, what do you got? Giving it a six. <laughs> six out of five, you're giving it? Six out of five, baby. What are you really giving? Are you giving it a five? I'm, I'm giving it a six. If you, you got to cap me at a five, you can cap me at a five. It doesn't exist, but you can give it a five. I'm, gonna give, <laughs> I'm giving it a six, but the cutoff just happens to be a five, so it'll be recorded as a five. But let the wow. record show. You liked it that much. It was a dancing six. Yes, I love this movie. I loved this movie when I wow. first saw it. And I was scared. I was like, you know what? I'm in a much different, you know, mindset than I was when I first watched it, you know, years ago. I haven't watched it for a few, you know, I it could not be as good. So I fully went into it prepared for it not to for me not to like it as much as I did you know, years ago, but I loved it even more. So I'm doubling down. Wow. Six. <laughs> Rounded down to a five. Rounded down to a five, but maybe your favorite movie of all time. So. Well, so, for, so it's, it ranks up there. I, I would say any movie that I've like burned through the DVD of is yeah. one that I really love. Fair. Hey, you love what you love. Son, how you feeling? Um, okay, so I'm going to Two and a half toothpicks because two and a half toothpicks. <laughs> two and a half. Wow, Brian, you look different. Look at that uh, smolder. Two <laughs> and a half toothpicks. Always so you on like the outside. Toothpick brought better than Marilyn like it, which is which is uh, now that's a hunk. Was, you thought it was average. You thought it was average. Yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly average. Oh, yeah. I thought the practical effects, the gory effects, were super cool. It reminded me a lot of a Tarantino style, you know. Except yeah. with a lot less dialogue. <laughs> um, well, for sure. But I, I think it had a lot of potential. I think that it could have been really, really good. But okay. it just missed the mark for me. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Brian? Um, I thought it was, for what it was, it was well put together. Um, once again, the, the acting uh, was impeccable for what it was. Um, could it have been fleshed out some more? Yeah. I'm sure it could have. Um, could it have been uh, uh, taking less oxygen out of the room and, and shortened it up for Marilyn? I'm sure it could have been. Um, but I enjoyed it for what it was. I, I, I understood where it was at. Um, I think uh, Ryan Gosling was being Ryan Gosling and 
they said, yeah, what well, you didn't drive, do that here, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and so uh, I'll, I'll give this a solid four. It's not a five. Um, there could be definitely improvement. If someone said, yo, they, they're thinking about making a sequel to this, I would be like, oh, I'd be interested in seeing that and see if they flesh more stuff out there or something. Right. Uh, and like I said, like there's that, uh, if you go see we- Wheel Man on Netflix with Frank Grillo, I, I think, in this game, yeah, it's, it's that, then you'd be like, yo, this is what this could have been kind of a thing. Interesting. Maybe we'll do Wheel Man. Um, I do have to leave in three minutes because I, I have a call I have to be on. So I'll, get, I'll say this, then I'll leave you guys unveil the cover and drop the link. Um, let me let me give my rating. Uh, I think I'm with Noah on this one. I'm very torn because I've been I've been going back and forth between a four point seven five. I love this movie. I have the same feeling. I don't know. I know it's not a perfect film. I know it's not like up there with like Godfather. Godfather two is like five, right? Or there's certain movies that are like five. Pulp Fiction to me would be a five. I don't know if this is there, but I enjoy it so much. I don't know why. So is it a five in my mind? Do I give a five that easy? I say the heart once with the heart once. The heart once with it once. I'm going to go five on drive. Ah! <laughs> I'm going to go five on drive. I don't know. I just love this movie. The five on drive. Wow. Ah. The soundtrack, the noir aesthetic, The it all just comes together. The acting, like Brian mentioned it just like comes together for me. I just thought it was, I know it's not like a perfect film and it's kind of slow at parts, but I didn't it doesn't bother when a movie is slow and it doesn't bother me, there's something there. Like, I don't know what it is. I would agree with you on that, Ralph. Like like yeah. Casey said, yeah. I told her going into it, it's just sad Ryan Gosling. It's, so I, I recognize <laughs> what the movie It just works. I love <laughs> yeah. these kinds of movies like Brian's right too, like I think like any kind of wheelman movie. And my friend Latoya Morgan, who was you guys might know, she's written for us before. She's doing a show with JJ Abrams on HBO that comes out this year called uh, Duster, which is about a driver, a getaway driver, and that's going to be, awesome. be my new favorite movie. I mean, my new favorite uh, TV series before I even saw. Um, How do you so, feel about Baby Driver? Baby Driver, I actually like Baby Driver, but I didn't love Baby Driver. Baby Driver. Um, Thank you, Mark. Mark, also, can you drop the link so Casey can drop it? Oh, Mark was already on it. Here Mark's we go. already on it. All right, guys, I gave it a five. I'm sorry, a five for drive. I do have to run early. I apologize. I just have to be on this call. I cannot miss it. Um, I appreciate wait, it. Wait, 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 the cover. Yeah, you guys do the rest. I'm going to have to jump off. Now. Okay. <laughs> I heart you guys. I appreciate it. Love. Um, and give everybody their props. You got it. You got it. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 <laughs> All right, now that he's not here, I'm in charge. There's a new I'm sheriff. Here. I'm showing the Z-rated cover. Yeah! <laughs> Let's go crazy. All the cover. The belt's not here. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, oh, nice. Nice and done. I like it. Hell yeah. The jacket was a challenge, okay? Yeah. I don't draw a lot of clothes. <laughs> so... <laughs> You guys know that if you follow like, my <laughs> socials, I don't draw a lot of clothes. So yeah, but it was actually fun. It was a good challenge. It's so it, it, it looks great. I'm glad that you picked Robin too, because if there's like, I would definitely put her on that same kind of Ryan Gosling just rage factor. Yeah, mm, yeah. Like personality wise, you made a good choice. I will have to credit Dave for that. Mm, nice for that but, choice. Yeah, and I definitely <laughs> want to buy that jacket. So if if, Zenis- if someone higher than me in Zenoscope can make that jacket a product to buy, please. That would be cool. That'd yeah. be sick. <laughs> this is fantastic, son. I love it. Oh, thanks. No, thank you. And we have the preview for now. <laughs> I probably just saw Brian's picture. <laughs> the duality of man. <laughs> oh, and I do this- love... Oh, hell yeah. Rambo. (laughs) Nice. I have not seen Rambo ever, ever, ever. So, what? 
I know. You... I don't. I don't know how that I managed to do that, but I didn't. So <laughs> it would be interesting. <laughs> Well, does anyone have anything that they uh, they want to promote? Any upcoming uh, uh, yeah. gigs? Sure. Next, uh, this coming weekend, we and Marilyn will be in the flesh uh, with the uh, – we'll be at Pensacon in Pensacon, Florida. It's a big uh, clerks kind of reunion. Myself, Jeff Anderson, Trevor Furman, Austin, Marilyn, as I mentioned, Scott Schiaffo, Ethan Supley, and Ming Chen will also be there. We're having our Q&A on uh, Friday at 7 p.m. This is part of four shows I'm doing. Uh, I'll be doing the following weekend after that in uh, up in Livonia, Michigan for Astronomicon 6. Then in March, I'll be GalaxyCon, Richmond, March 24th. And then in April, I will be in Huntsville, Alabama. So see you guys then. Yeah. I won't be at any of those other ones that <laughs> Brian mentioned <laughs> other than Pensacon, but I do have some others that uh, I have yet to kind of announce, but uh, yeah, I've got another four, I think. Yeah. This year so far, hopefully so far. <laughs> cool. And, and son, I think you have a, another Kickstarter in the works. Um, no, the one I, the one I was, um, that was live is just finished last week and um yeah we did really really well so thank you everybody that um that pledged uh it was the biggest one so far so i really can't wait to get this book into your hands um next up i have art book volume two that's going to come out so make sure you're signed up for my newsletter so that you get a notification when it goes live awesome right on. um i'd like to pr promote the zennies real quick um so this is the second year we are doing a zennies award um, you can vote right now for your favorites. You can vote for 2022 Movie Club as your favorite monthly series. Uh, personally, I went with the Ketchum series as my favorite, mm -hmm. but still a, 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 a fantastic uh, Sun choice. So, yeah, you guys can vote here. Uh, Sun, if you want to promote this, too, because uh, you're okay. nominated for a few things, for uh, a few cover series. Uh, I know the uh, your holiday cover, the the New Year's cover is also mm -hmm. up for grabs. So, um, cool. so you can vote there. Um, you can vote for whoever you'd like. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, any Sweet. other uh, parting words of wisdom? I got to go drive. I got to drive. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, I will well, see you tomorrow. Safe travels. Okay. Uh, yeah, yes. drive but safely, everybody. Leaving, actually, well, leaving to leaving my house tonight, flying out in the middle of the night. <laughs> but great seeing everybody as usual. Love, love, love. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Bye. Bye.